Good afternoon internet, Harvey here from Sacramentary Homebrew Channel. Today I just wanted to do a quick video on how to counter pressure bottle fill. I've got a Black Rock Milk Stout here which I'm just enjoying. It's uh, about three weeks old. Very tasty. Mm. Yep, so that's maybe happy enough with that. I think it needs to go into a competition and get a second opinion. For competitions, what I use is these horrible little plastic fizzy drink bottles because uh, they're cheap. They don't weigh very much when you're sending it down to Wellington from Auckland. You want something that's going to be cheap on the courier and something that's not going to break when the courier chucks it around like a rugby ball. So these actually work really well. And another bonus is they're really easy to fill using the counter pressure method. And counter pressure filling results in less oxygen in the bottle, which is definitely what you want when you're sending away to competition. I don't think these uh, last very well. If you kept them out for a year, you'd probably get a bit of oxygen in the bottle. But this is going to be getting judged in a month or so, so no big deal. Anyway, let's show you how this works. Real straightforward. So just a bit of basic gear that you need for counter pressure filling. First of all, you need a keg and some gas, obviously. So that's what we're filling from. And then you need a plastic PET bottle. And these generally have the same thread on the top. So that's really, really helpful. And then we have one of these carbonation caps. This is between $10 and $20 for one of these. Uh, all it does is it connects up a disconnect to a PET thread. So Coke bottles, water bottles, all sorts of things will take these. And I've custom this little pipe so that it's the right length. It goes all the way to the bottom of the bottle, just like that. And then... You need to make up one of these hoses, so it's going to be able to go from the liquid output on the keg, like that, to this one here only takes gas, so this has to be a gas, but some of these carbonation caps will take gas or liquid, and so it doesn't matter what the other end has got on the end. First thing we need to do is purge this of oxygen and air, so it's full of air at the moment. Easy peasy, we just take our gas connection, which is connected up to the CO2 bottle, connect it up there, and then just loosen this thread off a little bit. You'll hear it hissing. Well, you would hear it hissing if I had the gas on. There we go. This is uh, going away to competition, so I'm going to let it purge a little bit more than I normally would. Just make sure there's plenty of air, uh, gas coming through the bottom and coming out the top. And once you're happy with that, screw it tight again, take it off. I've now got a plastic bottle full of carbon dioxide. And connect the gas back onto the keg. Take my hose, which is connected to this. I've already purged the hose, so the hose is full of CO2 as well. So we don't have to worry about that being full of air coming into my bottle. And connect it up. Nothing happens. So the reason for that is because the pressure in here is exactly the same as the pressure in the keg. So what I need to do is release a little bit of pressure, just carefully, and the beer will start to flow, filling from the bottom. And I just Nice and slow. There it is, bottle full of beer. Give it a quick rinse. Now I just put the cap on. When I reconnect it, I'm just going to squeeze it, make sure there's no air in there. Cap goes on, and that'll fill back out in the fridge later on. <laughs> 